hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are well and i hope you guys are staying safe oh my god guys it's been a long long while and i am so so sorry um i had to take some time off to like focus on uni work and work because um as some of you know i am doing a master's in management which is very similar to an mba which is a lot of work um so yes i had to i had to make the hard decision to actually just focus on uni and that means i had to compromise on spending as much time on youtube but i am so sorry and i really missed you guys thank you so much for holding down the fort thank you for continuously supporting and watching my videos even when i was away you guys are absolutely amazing and i cannot believe that we are now at thirty-five thousand subscribers like my mind is blown away thank you so much guys um thank you for the love thank you for the support thank you for checking up on me um thank you for just you know showing me that the videos that i have made so far have a lasting impact because i've not been here but you know people still leaving me messages every day and it means the world to me i do not take it for granted welcome welcome if you're new here my name is ayatollah the creative director also in ibadini and the content creator of this channel diy with so in and this channel was created just for you so if that's something that if you're interested in sewing or craft definitely consider subscribing to this channel if you're a returning subscriber or an existing subscriber welcome back i missed you so much and i'm sending you guys virtual hugs and virtual kisses Thank you so much guys for being amazing thank you so much for supporting me you guys know i love and value you well i am back as you guys can tell from the title of this video and i am going to be showing you guys how to make a peplum top so i haven't decided yet but this video might be in two parts and i say that because um i have filmed a video of how to make your bodies but some of you guys wanted me to kind of do it again so i might be breaking it into to show you how to make the bodies and then in the second part i will show you how to sew and finish off the pepper on top which is you know which should be easy because we have done like a tutorial on how to make circles different kinds of circles so i will show you how to draft the bodies and then we'll cut it and then make the pepper on top and it will be done in a b c and of course i'll try my best to simplify but before we do that it's time for an unboxing so on the 2nd of march of january i got a package and i'm actually quite embarrassed because today is the 3rd of march 3rd of march which means i got this package two months ago months ago yes um so the people at radio sent me this package amazing amazing people and they sent me five items five five items and guess what not all five is for me because they've asked me to give four of you guys four items um i mean one each if that makes any sense so i'm gonna be giving away four of these items and uh, i haven't decided how i'm gonna give it away but it's gonna be people in the uk just because of logistic reasons so not because of any other reason but just for logistics but this is what it looks like and obviously if you want to shop and you're in a different part of the world we've got a link for america and a link for the uk and because it's off amazon i'm, in, I'm aware that amazon america delivers to other locations so you can use the link the link will be discounted so if you use my link it's going to be discounted you get a nice discount and yes the people at radio will literally just take care of you so definitely definitely use the link in the description box of this video i'll see if i can put the link in the icon above i'm not sure if the icon is here or here i mean you'll think after all these years i'll know where the icon is but you know whatever and if you're wondering what is this so when many of us think of like a measuring tape we traditionally think of this right this is what we are used to in terms of like a body measure or a measuring tape but the amazing people at radio have come up with this and it is so cool it's so cool because you remember like if you've seen like a carpenter or an architect's tape it has something like this right but it's not flexible it's not like that it's really stiff it just stands there so this is very similar but i like it because it's flexible and it retracts like it retracts on its own so cool like it could always it could always be a toy but it's not a toy so yes this is a very useful tool for those of you who live alone or you don't have anyone that can measure you but you want to measure yourself this helps you measure yourself and helps you get accurate measurements trust me i've used it 
and it's so helpful so literally you know the way i just ditched that measuring tape that's how i've actually just ditched it to use this so and you guys know i'm not going to recommend something that i've not used so this is what i've been using ever since i got it i opened one and i'm like i am in love and what i like most about it is that it locks in as well so let me come close so i can show you what i mean it locks in as well so that's it basically it locks in right there obviously because i flipped it it came off but it locks in right there now the interesting thing about it is if you can see on the inside it starts from zero inch one inch two inches and then three inches four inches five inches and so on it doesn't add to your measurement so i'm going to show you quickly how to use it to take your own body measurement and then we can now get into the video for today all right guys so as i was saying i was going to show you guys how to use it real quick and like like i said my favorite thing about it is the fact that it retracts so basically i'm going to show you guys how to measure my bust real quick so you want to make sure that when you're measuring your bust and in case you haven't seen my video on how to take a full body measurement please go and watch the video i'll put a link in the icons above as well as in the description bar click on the video watch it it's really detailed and it gives you all the measurements that you would need to make any outfit i'm serious any outfit so yes um this is how you take the measurement now normally we use this like a regular tape but it's you know it could be a bit very it could be a bit uncomfortable and then it could slip off and all of that but with this one you have that function where you can just clip it in position which is what i've done now and then i'm just retracting to make sure that it's firm now remember like i showed you guys this thing has a reading on the inside so after retracting to the point where i feel like it's fine i can read 40 which is what my bus measurement will be again let's you know let's show you for argument's sake another part so if i was gonna take like Let's see my wrist right very awkward position to take your measurements you just want to retract okay and key that in position which would have been harder and just do that oops that came off so let's do that again keep that right and keep that in position and that way i can read my measurement as six but because it has to be free i'll say make it seven like so it's a bit loose so i can read my measurement as seven don't forget that like i told you earlier it has the measurements from here so it starts from zero one two three zero one two and then continues here at three where it keys okay so you want to make sure that you get yourself one of this like i said i'll put a link in the description box below you can shop yours if you're in the uk or you're in the us and for the lucky people that i'm going to be giving you know this ones to lucky people that are getting this for got four of them so yeah i will let you guys know how you can win it and yeah Thank you so much guys so we're going to get right into the tutorial for today i'm going to teach you guys how to draft a bodice i'll go as slow as i can again and then we're going to do next week how to make the peplum top it's going to be a simple peplum top it's not going to be lined i'll probably make it high low or something just to give it some character but that's basically it all right guys enjoy the video start off by drawing a top line that is only about four centimeters from the top of the paper then go ahead and draw a side line that is about 4 cm as well. It doesn't have to be 4 cm, you can make it 3 cm, but then again I'll just say about 4 cm. So as you can see, I've drawn my top and side lines. Next, go ahead and measure the back body length on the side line. The back body length is basically the shoulder to waist measurements but at the back. When you measure the back body length, go ahead and square out as shown. After measuring the back body length and squaring out, go ahead and measure the bust measurement plus 6 centimeters. So again, if you've not noticed, I have all my measurements in centimeters because that's what works for me. So you want to take the bust measurement plus 6 centimeters and then you want to go ahead and mark that horizontally, which is what I'm doing now. Repeat the same measurement on the back waistline, which is basically the horizontal line at the bottom. 
After measuring the bust measurements plus 6 cm on the top and the bottom line, go ahead and connect the two lines together with a straight vertical line as shown. By now, you should have a rectangle. On the top horizontal line and bottom horizontal line, go ahead and measure half the measurement. So for instance, if you measured a bust measurement plus 6 to be 100, you'll be measuring 50, which is half of that. So you want to go ahead and measure half the measurement and then go ahead and connect it with the straight line as shown. Essentially, you're dividing the rectangle into two. Label the center line that you've just drawn as side seam and then the left hand side of the pattern as the center back while the right hand side of the pattern will be the center front as shown. Next, go ahead and measure the neck width. The neck width will be measured, measured on the horizontal line and the measurement for that is the neck circumference measurement divided by 5 minus 1 centimeter. So for instance, if the neck circumference measurement is 40, 40 divided by 5 would give me 8 minus 1 will give me 7. Next, measure the neck circumference depth. The neck circumference depth is measured on the vertical line as you can see and for that one you do the neck circumference measurement divided by 5 and you mark whatever you measure. After that, go ahead and join the two points with a curve as shown and as you can see I'm using my pattern master. Remember, if you want to shop any of the tools that I'm using, please check the links in the description box below. Moving on to the left side of the pattern, which is the back neck, go ahead and measure the back neck width. To measure the back neck width, what you want to do is the next circumference measurement divided by 5 minus 0 0.5. You want to go ahead and mark that point. And then for the neck depth, you want to go ahead and mark 2 centimeters. We particularly use 2 centimeters. however the original formula or the actual formula for it is the back body length minus the nape to waist. However, I would just advise that you use 2 centimeters for the neck depth at the back. Connect the points by joining the curve as shown. Next, on the center front line which is the line to your right, go ahead and measure the shoulder to bust point area as you can see i'm marking that vertically and then you want to also go ahead and measure the shoulder to waist measurement one thing you will understand is that the front shoulder to waist measurement or the front body length is actually longer than the back body length and that is because of the presence of the bust so basically your front body length should be longer than the back body length by about two to three or four centimeters Square out the shoulder to bust point mark. Next, we need to draw the armhole line and the armhole line will be drawn horizontally from the center back all the way to the side seam and then the center front. To get the armhole measurement, you want to take the bust measurement divided by 4 plus 1.5 centimeters. Again, that's the bust measurement divided by 4 plus 1.5 centimeters. And you want to mark that down vertically. So you want to that mark that at the center back line, the side seam line, and the center front line from the top to where that is. And then you draw a horizontal line to connect all the points. And then you will have the arm all line. So again, you want to mark that on the center bust and um, center back line, side seam line, and the center front line and connect all the three points horizontally as shown. On the squared out bust point line, go ahead and measure half of the bust span. So the bust span is the measurement from one nipple point to another nipple point. So go ahead and measure half of the bust span measurement on the bust point line as shown. And as you can see, I'm just labeling with a different color so that it's clear and you guys understand it. Starting from the center front top, we're going to go ahead and mark half of the front cross shoulder measurements. So the front cross shoulder measurement divided by 2, you want to go ahead and mark what you have there. After marking what you have there, you want to go ahead and square down by 3.5 centimeters. So make sure you square down by 3.5 centimeters and mark where you square down or mark the 3.5 centimeters point. Connect the 3.5 centimeters point to the neck width point with dotted lines so where the neck width curve starts you want to go ahead and connect it with dotted lines and as you can see i'm using a red marker here so that it's visible to you guys 
on the dotted lines, go ahead and mark half of the shoulder measurements that you took. After marking half of the shoulder measurements on the dotted lines, you want to go ahead and do another half of the shoulder measurements minus one and mark that on the dotted lines again. So you want to start marking from where you stopped the first marking. So basically you mark half of the shoulder measurements and then from that point you mark half of the shoulder measurements minus one. Connect the two points to the marked point on the boss point line. So you basically just want to connect it so that you have a triangle that looks like this. Next thing to do is called shaping the dart. To shape the dart, you basically want to fold the longer side of the dart or the longer line against the shorter line. However, when you're making a bodice, you typically close from your left hand side to the right so you basically want to close from the left hand side to the right and if it's convenient for you you can hold it in place with a paper tape so it doesn't keep moving after doing that you want to go ahead and draw the shoulder length starting from the neck width points so this time you don't want to draw a dotted line you want to actually draw a full line and then you want to draw the entire shoulder length measurements after that you want to go over the fold with your tracing wheel you would have some dotted lines upon opening it and you just trace out the dotted lines. After shaping the front dart, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the front cross armhole. Now the front cross armhole is basically about halfway between the shoulder and the armhole line. So essentially you want to go ahead and measure the distance from the top to the armhole line that we marked. And then you want to divide whatever value you get by 2 and add 1. So for instance, if the shoulder to ammo line is 16, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 will be 9. So the half the measurement of the ammo line distance plus 1 centimeters. After marking the point on the center front line, go ahead and close the dart and then go ahead and square, square out from that point. So you basically want to make sure your dart is closed and then you get your set square and square out. After squaring out, while the dart is still closed, you want to go ahead and measure half the front cross shoulder, front cross arm o measurement is. So if the front cross arm o measurement is 34, you want to measure half of that plus 0 0.5 centimeters and mark that. The reason we're doing all of this is so that we can get the right or proper shoulder measurements. On the ammo line, starting from the side seam or the midpoints, go ahead and mark two centimeters to the left and two centimeters for the, to the right. This will serve as a guide while drawing the ammo curve. After marking that, go ahead and draw the front ammo curve, making sure it touches the points on the arm front cross arm o line and the front cross shoulder or the shoulder length line as shown. Moving on to the back, go ahead and mark the back cross shoulder measurements divided by two. So the back cross shoulder measurement divided by two, you want to mark that and then you want to square down from that point by 3.5, basically just like we did for the fronts. After doing that, you want to go ahead and draw with dotted lines. You want to draw the shoulder slants and the shoulder slants will be drawn from the neck width area all the way to the 3.5 centimeters drop. Measuring from the neck width area, go ahead and mark half of the shoulder measurement and then go ahead and mark 1.5 centimeters away from it. After that, Find the midpoint between the two points. So basically, the midpoint that you have between 1.5 centimeters and square down by 8 centimeters. After squaring down, draw in the small dots as shown to meet the two points on the left and the right. Your dots should only be 1.5 centimeters wide since that's what we left. Next, go ahead and close the dot and then go ahead and shape the dot. To do this, you want to fold the dart from the longer length onto the shorter length like I told you earlier. In this case, you are basically closing the dart towards the arm o. So for this side, it will be from the left to the right. However, for the front area, it was from the right onto the left. 
After closing the dart, go ahead and draw in the shoulder slant. To draw in the shoulder slant, you want to go ahead and draw a straight line starting from the shoulder neck point or from the neck width point all the way to where the shoulder length measurement stops. Next, you want to go ahead and mark the back crossed armhole area. And to do this, you need to take the measurement from the top up onto the armhole line divided by 2 plus 1. The exact same thing we did for the front. So after marking this point, go ahead and square out as shown. On the squared line, go ahead and measure half the back cross arm all measurements plus 0 0.5. So if the back cross arm all measurement is 38, 38 divided by 2 is 19, 19 plus 0 0.5. Next, go ahead and draw the arm all line, making sure it's touching the point um, go ahead and draw the arm hole rather, making sure it's touching the point on the arm hole line, it's touching the point on the back cross arm hole, and it's touching the point on the back cross shoulder as shown. Hey guys, so you remember that we made a mark on the center front line to show where the front body length or the shoulder to waist measurement in front stops. Go ahead and draw a slant line to connect that point to the back body length so it will be a slant line so that you can account for the presence of the bust. Next, starting from center front area on the slant line, go ahead and mark half the bust pan and connect this to the bust pan line on the bust point with a straight line so basically you just want to square up and if you've done this correctly you should go ahead and just link up to the bust point area starting from the center back go ahead and measure the slant line from the center back area up onto the side seam area whatever the value you get for that divide it by two and then take away 0 0.5 centimeters so for instance if you measure 25 centimeters 25 centimeters divided by 2 will be 12.5 12.5 minus 5 0 0.5 will be 12 so go ahead and mark 12 and then square that up onto the arm hole line so the next thing we want to do is calculate the waist suppression and basically this is the difference between the bust measurement and the waist this is what makes your pattern unique to you to do this, you basically want to find the bust measurement plus 6 centimeters divided by 2 minus the waist measurement divided by 2. So if you remember in the beginning when we were doing this, we found the bust measurement and then we added 6 centimeters. We must continue using that so that we are consistent. So go ahead and do the maths. And as you can see, there's a detailed description on the screen that you can follow. Now, it's important to say that whatever figure you get for the darts, you must share it so that the front measurement or the front dart is slightly bigger than the back and the side seam dart. It's okay for the back dart and the side seam dart to be the same, but ideally your front dart should be about one centimeter bigger than them or larger than them. So the next thing is after finding the calculations for the dart, we're going to start with the back dart and to find the back dart, you basically want to take whatever value you calculate. So if you calculate four, you want to divide that by two. So for your instance, if you calculate four centimeters, you divide it by two, you have two centimeters. Now, starting from that middle line that you have, you want to go ahead and mark two centimeters to the left and another two centimeters to the right. Moving on to the side seam line, whatever value you calculate for the dart, you divide it by two. You mark two centimeters or whatever centimeter, half of it to the left, half of it to the right. And then moving on to the front dart, whatever value you calculate for the front dart, you divide it by two. Mark half to the left of the line of the bust pan and another half to the right. And then go ahead and draw your dart using your ruler and draw it to the bust point area, draw it to the side seam armhole area and draw it to the armhole line of the back as shown. So after doing that, you want to go ahead and cut out the pattern as shown. And at this point, your bodice is now ready. With this bodice, you can make a blouse, you can make a jacket, you can make 
anything that you want really if you need to make a dress i've told you guys what to do combine it with a skirt and like i said this is the second time i'm making this video so if you want to see the second the first time i made it or the first part of it i'll put a link in the icons and in the description box go ahead and watch it and then it's important that you watch how to take body measurement in case any of the body measurements i'm saying is not clear please watch that video we've come to the very end of the video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope it was worth your while if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to leave your comments suggestions and feedback in the comment section below if you've not subscribed don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that i have for you thank you so much guys for staying with me to the very end and of course next week you get the second part of this video as promised thank you and have a good week